So this keynote was born out of conversation that we had as a He Taong or Waka team um, over the last three to four years as we've been working in um, the community up and down um, the Motu. Our experience has been that financial literacy or financial education, or in this case, what Pacifica people have said, um, financial well-being is not only a key to unlock the many areas of our lives that, um, that we live in, but it's also um, a must um, in all the uh, work that we do in education. And as we go through our session um, this afternoon, um, you'll make up your own mind about how this works. I'm going to share just a couple of experiences that I've had. So it is my pleasure this afternoon. Most of you will know that the topic is here, how financial well-being provides further access to education. As a topic, it doesn't seem to say anything. <laughs> I made it up. Um, <clears throat> it's not even inspiring. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not really profound. Um, it's not even exciting. In fact, when I had another read last night, it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <clears throat> because it's not even a question. <clears throat> um, so what the heck is it? The statement sim seems to imply that if a person or a learner has financial well-being, then the chances are he or she will have a better chance of finding or accessing ed education, whatever that means. The statement also makes the assumption that if this is true, then it's a simple, then maybe it's a simple, logical step from financial well-being direct to an education of your choice. So what do you think? Simply put, I believe that if a person or learner has financial well-being, then he or she will have a better chance of finding or accessing education. So the statement could be put better by saying, when a learner is experiencing financial well-being, his or her chances are enhanced, improved, heightened, or even boosted uh, towards better connectedness with education options and opportunities. So, question, is this true for all communities, yes or no? If yes, then I guess every learner will be at the same level of education achievement and success. And no one ever has to be wanting for anything or left behind, simply because access to education would be the same for everyone. If no, then, why is this different for some communities? <clears throat> you see, to be Pacifica is to be in a community that is disproportionately represented in lower socioeconomic areas, have lower incomes and have higher level of unemployment. A greater proportion of Pacific children and young people live in overcrowded households and we could go on and on and on. But our incomes were the lowest in the 213 census. <clears throat> it was Dr. Russell Bishop who said this, if Aotearoa and our economic state was likened to a car, he said the car had four tires and one of the tires was flat. Which tire would you fix? That's right, you wouldn't be bothered looking at the other three tires. He went on to say that if Māori Pacifica represented this flat tire, we should fix it. And the whole country, the car itself, would roll along at tremendous speed. <laughs> but it's not that simple. <laughs> I've seen some of the Pacific Island people's cars. <clears throat> <clears throat> you see, it's not that simple, hey, people, we all know. It's in the fabric of Pacifica epistemology, there lies a host of considerations that are not just cultural, but also social, physical and financial. Take remittances, or money that Pacifica sent back to the Pacific Islands, Tonga, Fiji, Samoa, to Elau, to Balu, Cook Islands, and you where. So for some people who are not familiar with the term remittances, here's a couple of kind of little things to explain it a bit. So there are groups of money, and a lot of Pacific people in this room will identify with this slide. It's, I see the heads nodding. The Samoans falling asleep. <laughs> um, and there's different terms in our communities of how we call remittances. Uh, Samoans might call them fa'alave lave, uh, the Tongas might call them some other pa'anga term. Um, but they are certainly terms in common to all of our families, whether you're traditionally brought up in the Pacific or whether you are 70% of the young people that are born here 
in Aotearoa. So the startling thing about this slide is that it's increased from 22 billion to 327 billion. So that's around the world. That's a kind of economy that we're talking about that Pacifica people are sliding <laughs> into the islands without not very many people knowing. So they are a common thing in all the island groups. Bruce. So here's a couple more things. I've got two of these slides, and we're just about through. Cool, eh? Okay, so this slide here, again, it just says that, again, the figures are, are huge, um, but I've put in red there that 75% of Pacific people in New Zealand send money home for their families. 75%. That's a lot of people, eh? So out of the quarter of a million that we have here, that's where the money's going. So each year, 166 million leaves this country. You say to yourself, how does this relate to the students I work with? It's got everything to do with the students and the learners that you work with. <clears throat> when you add to this the obligations that we have for our churches to contribute our tithes and our offerings each day, week, month and year, just for the church's physical and spiritual upkeep, to support the church programs and the buildings, and to finance the work of missionaries that we send overseas. Honestly, it's sad when each week we're reminded better from our ministers in our churches that the more you give, the more God will bless you with more and more. And if you want to live the abundant life, then you have to give. If you were to drive your car just down the road here to Favona Road in Otahuhu, you will see that there, within a seven kilometre triangle, there are four Tongan churches. All those Tongan churches are well over $2.2 million each, all financed by family members of each church. And I'm only talking about Favona Road. Try again to Samoan Catholic Church or Ifakasa. Try again to the Tongan Methodist Church and have a look at the wealth that's sitting in there around our churches. So add those remittances to the kind of financial commitment that we do to our churches, and you can see that the picture is starting to change its shape. For some people today, you may have to turn a complete 180 degrees from what you're currently doing. I spent four years of my high school at the best school in New Zealand, Avondale College. It was our English class one day and our English teacher came in. Her name was Mrs. Boyle. I'll never forget her. Boyle on your bum, we used to call her. <laughs> she came out to the front of the class and she looked, she goes, today <laughs> we will be studying poetry. I mean, oh, cool. So she goes, I won't continue with her voice because it just embarrasses me. She says, open up your books. It's William Wordsworth. We're just going to read out of this book. We've got this beautiful poem. It's entitled An Ode to a Summer's Day. Us three boys went, oh, cool, cool. So she starts to read An Ode to a Summer's Day. It talks about some um, undulating clouds that floated by in the sky. Spoke about um, rolling um, brooks, I think, yeah. that sort of trundled <laughs> down the side. And she spoke about daffodils that were growing. I put my hand up. I said, excuse me, Mrs. Bull, you can tell that us three boys have had some amazing summers. <laughs> Would you like to hear about our summer? She was really offended. She just went, well, go on then. So I stood up and I said, you know, in our summers, there's no clouds in the sky. <laughs> We don't have rolling brooks. We, we have tsunamis. You know, and, and I said, and what's a daffodil? <laughs> Mrs. Boyle asked me to stand up, go to the back of the class and face the corner for the next 26 minutes of the remainder of that class. Was she interested in what I had to bring? So it's true that when a learner is experiencing financial well-being, his or her chances are enhanced, improved, heightened, or even boosted towards better connectedness with education options and opportunities. But in the case of Pacifica, it also needs the wraparound of excellent teaching and learning, reflective practice, strong commitment to pastoral care, and a good understanding of each Pacifica group's financial ways of seeing the world. Because the way a Samoan sees money is really different to our Fijian Cook Island, Yuan Tokelau does. 